It's Ted Ryan from Coca-Cola Conversations blog here to interview Gordon Muir at the Varsity. And as an Atlanta native, I'm really excited to talk about the history of the Varsity and Coca-Cola. So first of all, welcome. Thank you. Okay, 1928, I've got a picture, don't have it with me today, but it shows the Varsity sign and, and it, you know, Coca-Cola, the Varsity, mm -hmm. all the way from the very beginning one, the, right. the yellow jacket. Talk about some of the, the, the ties between Coca-Cola and the Varsity over the years. Well, um, it's been really a tight relationship. I mean, back all the way back to my uh, grandfather, and I guess when he started, I mean, you're in Atlanta, you're going to serve Coke, and that relationship just continued to grow over the years, all the way up to, to now, and we couldn't think of serving anything else but Coke, you know, since we have a direct line all the way to the <laughs> building, you know, underneath the pavement here. Okay, well, but, um, we'll set up. When, I, when I was growing up, my dad always used to tell me there was a direct line from the Coca-Cola company to the Varsity that had a fountain spigot. So, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> That's how you get all that product here. Uh, but, you know, that is a funny story. There have been the rare occasion when we've been, like, slammed busy, like, wow. on the verge of running out of Coke, and actually they've brought it out of the cafeteria from, they've stolen it out of the, the building here, so we wouldn't run out before the truck got here. Tell me a little bit about the history of the varsity. I know founded by my grandfather, okay. founded by my grandfather, Frank Gordy, he um, started the varsity in 1928, and uh, he started it with about $2,000 and a pot of hot dogs in the back of a little gas station, and then moved up to this location. I started working uh, at the Varsity Junior. Um, I think I was 16 years old. Great place to start with my aunt over there, Susan Gordy, and um, she put me through the ringer. Tell me about some of the bowling alley and uh, barber shop and. Well, as far as I know, because you know, it was way before my time, <laughs> but, uh, but um, that first little dining room, that lot that he bought, he just kept adding on to that building and actually moved his location down and from what I understand, leased out the other locations for the barber shop and the duck pen bowling alley. So, and then as he grew, he took that back over from him. When I was growing up, we came down to watch TV down here. My dad would tell me stories about coming down to watch the Lone Ranger. When, when did the TV room start and what is some of the lore around the TV rooms? My grandfather loved technology stuff. I mean, he just loved transistor radios, you know, back when I was a kid, smaller ones. I mean, he always, he loved that kind of stuff. And I just think it was just an idea that he had that nobody else does it. A lot of customers that will come in that are older and will say, you know, the first time I ever saw a television set was here at the Varsity. We've got some pictures here we're going uh, to show. You know, back in the old days, like with these TVs, you know, the old round looking tubes, um, it was like more like a piece of furniture. There are employees today that still have the TV that my grandfather gave them when he changed the TVs.